Hi everyone, I'm Tom Wilson. Welcome back to the Northern Gamblers podcast. Uh, first podcast in quite a while and I'm joined by James Dunkley. James, how are you? Looking forward to it? Uh, yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? So it'll be good to uh, to get back into the swing of things, discuss some uh, some Cheltenham stuff. What was that fruity drink that you were drinking? Just, just a little Copperberg cider. So, mixed berries, yeah. Mixed berries, yeah, yeah. I've got a a strawberry one as well. I've got oh a Swiss beer and another Swiss beer. What's with the king with sticking his tongue out? No, that's the brand, isn't it? Unsa beer, I think it's called. It must be in King, or something. Mm. Yeah. Um, so day one of the Cheltenham Festival. Uh, we're probably going to do like a day preview or feature podcast every week from now until the festival. So day one, we've got the Supreme, we've got the Arkle, we've got the Champion Hurdle, we've got the Mares, we've got the Close Brothers, we've got the Ultima, and we've got the Four Miler, which is no longer four miles. Um, so we'll just pretty much get straight into it. So we will go to the Supreme, where we've got... Shishkin heading the market, I think at fives, best price you can get. Um, Abacadabras, um, Asterian for Lange, uh, and then Fiddler on the Roof. Um, Shishkin's an interesting one, runs at Huntington, I think, this week, and it's been banded around quite a lot. But um, Huntington is a notoriously bad tra um, prep track for Cheltenham, largely due to the fact that it's a uh, fundamentally different track configuration than Cheltenham. Um, the start um, I've got is horses having a prep at Hunting Huntington and not from 88. I think also Elliot put up on Twitter, they're even something like not from 125 or 123 or something as well. So, um, yeah, Shishkin heads the market. Um, do you like him? Do you like any others? I'm on the move. My uh, internet's going very slow, so I'm just moving. In the living room. Um, I, he's. I mean, I can't be having Triskin at the moment at all. If I'm honest, me neither. Me neither. At all. Um, and I don't think we'll learn that much about him at Huntington. It looks a pretty, pretty easy race for him. So, I think the price is wild. Sorry, I'm trying to do about ten things here. I'm trying to move the table. Um. <sighs> So yeah, he, uh, anyone backing him at like four to one, five to one is just crazy. To be fair, um, I really like one in the Supreme, and I just don't understand why he's being crabbed so much. And that is uh, Abacadabras. He his form is absolutely rock solid. Yes, he got beat by Envoy Allen, but Envoy Allen's coming across as the prodigal son. And uh, he, in that race, um, it was the Royal Bond. He, he beat him one and a half lengths, but God, I don't even think they gave Abacadabras that, that hard a ride, really. And he was travelling the best um, coming to the last. And, like, I put it this way, if it was the Cheltenham Festival and that was coming up the hill, he would have been getting a lot more uh, wax of the old persuader. Um, and... That's that form is insane. And then he came out and won easily in a it was not the best race, but he, I mean, he couldn't have done it any easier. Um, he's got the bumper form. I, um, I actually think with this, this, um, with the Dublin Race Festival that's just been on, I don't think we even saw the best novice hurdlers, they didn't even bother turning up. So, you've got to presume that Gordon Elliott he had easy work in the uh, race that, um, thingy for Lange one, he must be sat at home thinking Abacadabras is better than easy work, in my opinion. I mean, that's just a, a total guess. He might not think that, but I I think he thinks he's got better at home. Same with Envoy Allen. Obviously, he didn't send him, so and he's the sort of the benchmark for any sort of novice hurdler. And then he, even if you look at his run before that at Navin, where he, he destroyed latest exhibition, mm. um, basically on the bridle, didn't even have to get busy at all. And he's come out and won twice since beating Andy uh, Dufresne and then won at the um, a grade one 
at the Dublin Racing Festival. So, I mean, he was he was drifting, and I was thinking, oh God, is he is he injured or is he having a setback? Which would be the only worry. But apart from that, I just think he's rock solid. Graded winner, definitely going this race. Only beaten by the horse that's supposed to be the best novice for a while. And I just think it's a bit of recency bias in this market at the moment, um, especially with this Asterian for Lange. I wasn't that impressed. I thought it was good. Definitely, like, obviously it was good. But as I said, just thinking about Gordon Elliott having easy work and if in my head, if I if he thinks Abacadabras is better, I don't think he would be that worried about... Well, I, we will be not so as worried. Obviously, he'd be worried about Asteria for Lange, but I just think Abacadabras is better. I just think he's a rock solid bet in that market. Mm. I'm, I'm quite amazed that. Um, well, no, let me ask you a question first. Do you know what the most kind of um, notable prep race is for the Supreme? What's been the most powerful prep race? Or it's it's probably that that race that was run at the Dublin Racing Festival. Yeah, it is. Yeah. for Lange, it? Yeah, it is, it is. Very, very, very powerful. Um, so the delight in it shall always be the delight and i think it's now called the chanel farm and novice hurdle um at leopardstown is a it's a really powerful prep race for the supreme um so we've had five winners in recent years coming from that race i mean classical dream came from that race last year um Vautour came from that race in 2013 champagne um in 2014 champagne fever came from that race in 2013 so i'm quite amazed that we've got um a winner of the delight like in, in that asterian falange who absolutely pissed up in that race um who's still third favorite i'm like absolutely amazed by it um because i mean classical dream wasn't that impressive in that race the year before and then he absolutely sluiced up in the supreme so i think he's still a decent price on the uh at the 11 to 2 you can get her with william hill and you can get five to one with um with some other bookmakers i mean it must be an unbelievable each way bet um brings me to a point that i want to make about um should we say horse racing populations and the quality of certain populations so every year we have this debate are uh, like oh, how good are the Irish horses? How good are the English or the British um, horses? All that sort of shit. Okay, so and it's and Mark Kramer in his book does a very nice um, kind of chapter on horse racing populations. Like if you can actually judge the relative strength of populations, and when kind of one horse or a couple of horses out of that population travel into another population. Um, and if in your handicap and you've really got a good angle on the stronger population, so you're going to do absolute damage in the bookmaking markets on the um, when they're sent off to travel to race in different regions or spheres and all that sort of stuff. But like this, this Irish and British thing debate goes on every single year, um, and it's been proven time and time again, um, and I expect it to be proven the same again this year that the Irish horses are better than the british horses so i think you can see it on the screen um and if you want so if you're listening you can't see it but if you're watching you can see it so um irish based horses on the island of ireland um 1020 runners at the festival since 2008 104 winners plus 38 um p and l to sp plus 398 p and l to betfair sp they're plus 81 to, uh, sorry, no, they're eight, eight against 81 expected wins. So they're plus 22 wins um, above expectation. Um, and the British horses have um, 89 wins from 2,321 runners. They're minus 1,038 to SP, minus 755 to bet for SP. And their wax is minus nearly 23. So the traditionally historically also in recent times the irish population is stronger so shishkin no thank you that's all just, just going back to a steer for Lange and his price mm. you're mentioning i think part of that is they're not sure if he's going to go supreme or ballymore mm. so obviously obviously the same owners have shishkin as well so uh -huh. they're gonna to have to decide between them so that's probably if he was nailed on to go to supreme he probably would be a little bit shorter yeah 
yeah. you'd expect the the Mullins D- Detroit um Detroit Detroit <laughs> winner to go to the um Supreme or or I would anyway. You would, but I mean it's it's well it's it's interesting, isn't it? Because they're in different tr- the trainers as well. Nicky Henderson's got Shishkin. Yeah. So it's it depends who's going to be pulling the strings there. Is it Henderson? Is it Mullins? Or is it the actual owners who are going to? So. We'll the, the, Hen- the Henderson record's like a really funny one. So he's um he's only one from twenty three uh, in the race since two thousand and eight. Um, do you know who the winner was? With the Supreme. Yeah, for Henderson. Altior. Yeah, Altior in twenty sixteen. Mm. Um, so it looks like a really crap. Kind so he of... needs a good one to win it then, because he couldn't. He didn't win it with Sprinter Sacra. Yeah, it's it's a really funny one. Really, it's like one of those stats that you. It's it looks really nice to say. It. But I'm also pretty wary of it. So, like one from twenty-three, um, with a trainer of the caliber of Henderson, with the caliber of horses that he's had running in it, looks like a negative. However, his play strike rate is forty-three point four eight percent. So, like a load of them are getting placed. So you wonder if that's just like I don't know, like they're hitting the frame mm. and they just haven't happened to win. And then you get this like lying stat that looks like he's got a shite strike rate in the race when actually. Um, yeah, well, he's, he's gonna have he's gonna have at least one decent two miler, isn't he? Every year, so you would think top trainer is gonna have a decent place record, even if he isn't getting the wins. But yeah. um, I, I really like Abacadabras, as I mentioned. But a steer for launch be interesting, which just does. But I think the other one we need to mention is um, is Fiddler on the Roof for uh, Tizard. Yeah, he he the horse that I really liked for the Supreme last year. That won this has gone a similar route winning the Tallworth was uh Elixir de Nuts. So I re- should really like this fiddler on the roof because he won it really impressively, but mm. I just don't think that I don't think that Tallworth was it looks was that it's, good really. It's I just uh, this is I'm really quite quite keen to crab a lot of the Irish form over the Dublin racing festival this weekend, even though you've just had done a big spiel about the Irish horses. Mm. Um but I think this is one race that, that will definitely be going to Ireland. I, I, I crave you crabbing the Irish form. Please, uh, we'll, please we'll do get, it on Betfair. We'll get, we'll get to some more high-profile horses yeah. in a bit, probably, even though they won't be racing on the Tuesday and we're discussing it. Yeah. What might be um, – th- this might be quite funky to look at um, – this is the pace, the typical kind of pace profile and how pace biases have played out for the Supreme. Um, mega small sample size, so take it with a pinch of salt. But since 2015, um, of the five horses that have front run, none of them have won and none of them have placed. I mean, Jesus, not from five is now, but, you know, um, fun to tell the story. Um, prominent horses have done well. Held up horses have done very poorly. And division horses haven't really done that well either. Um, but which is against the traditional pace bias, which is kind of forefront runners, particularly um, um, in these types of races. So I just I just wonder. Um, obviously, you know the the buzz and the furore that goes with the Supreme, and we all know they go off at a breakneck pace. But maybe it really just doesn't um, contribute to the ones at the front winning. Looking at the pace profiles of some of these in this race. Um, this Asterian Falange, um, when he won the Deloitte, he led. Okay. When he won at Nace on the 5th of January, he also led. So um, if my very small sample size statistic <laughs> bears out, that might be a worry for me. Also, Fiddler on the Roof is a horse that likes to lead as well. So he made well, all, he won at Sandown in December. He led at Wincanton. Um, and he very soon led um, at Chepstow as well um, in October. So I, I don't know. There, there might there might be a couple of these that go um too forward and leave someone to pick up the pieces. Well, do you know who won't be going? Who won't be prominent? Who will be nicely held up, traveling like, like a dream? Yeah, that. correct. So I think that... it'll, I think the race will really suit him. Nice strong pace, be held up. And uh, I've heard I've heard people say that he yeah, might not have the sort of the minerals for a battle, but I, I don't know. If you can say that when he's only only have a lost over hurdles to uh to envoy allen and if envoy allen is as good as people think i mean even even the third in that race and from the royal bonds came out and nearly won the irish champion hurdle at the uh, uh, driver star mm. um every, everywhere you look the form is just getting franked 
Um, I, I, I couldn't believe it when he, he went out to like sevens on Betfair the other day. And he's come back in a little bit now. Um, if he gets there fit and well, obviously he won't be having another run now. Um, mm -hmm. Go straight to the festival. I, he will definitely be carrying my money. I think. Uh, and if you're giving me six to one, I'll be. I'd be very happy. So. Yeah. Just a bit more on that pace. So of the front runners, um, the best they've managed to finish is fifth. Um, so um, Chilaus and Marie did it in 2017, and Charbel did it in 2016. So led or front run, and and yeah, came on fifth. The others bombed mm -hmm. out. But um, yeah. So don't lead sitting behind and pick up the it, feet. A... I think Classical Dream did that very very well last year, didn't he? He, well, no, he led, didn't he? He led for most of it. No, he, oh, he, he was ahead from uh, halfway. Three hours or something, yeah. Yeah, um, I think the ground helped Classical Dream a lot last year. I think. Oh yeah, we'll come on to that. He loves loves a bit of soft ground, which he hasn't really. He's been very disappointing this this year, hasn't he? Yeah. We'll um, come on <laughs> we'll come on to that, will we? But um, yeah, there's there's not two others that I'd be that interested in. Um. Mainly through lack of experience, I think. Obviously, Shantry House is quite interesting for Nicky Henderson again. But I mean, as you said, his his record isn't the best in getting the winners, and he might, could be another horse that basically Henderson hasn't got enough runs into him. I think he's due to run at the weekend, but he's had one one run over hurdles, um, and he won. Um, but I don't know. I'd, I think he'd won at least three, maybe four, going into the festival. I think that can, that can undo a horse. Um, um I give you, I give you some some trends. <laughs> mm. Favourites have won only two from the last twelve races, and that was two proper horses. That was Duvan and Duvan and Voto. Voto. Oh, James, unbelievable knowledge. Well, yeah, and I'll I'll was second favourite. Obviously, Min went off favourite that year. Yeah. Um, but obviously, there was a lot of the. And that the 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 days of the Richie Mullins hype, because uh, obviously he had Vator and he had Duvan and that, and it was Min was sort of living off that a bit. Altio was uh, obviously very very solid form going into it. Um, it was the sort of Min hype that made him favourite. So, mm. um, so but you know, I, I don't. I wouldn't say you get too many long shots. I know LeBake won it, the, the obvious long shot that everyone was on. Um, well, interesting you say that. So the next yeah. that nine of the tw uh, last twelve winners have come from the top four in the betting. Mm. Um, and it actually, since two thousand and eight, if you just backed the top four in the betting, you'd have a record of nine from forty eight, eighteen point seven five percent strike rate, plus twenty one points to industry starting price, plus twenty eight point six points to betfair starting price, and you'd be plus eight point four eight points in the place market as well so, yeah it's normally near the front of the market yeah it's it, you need a good horse to be winning this and it's unlikely that the one's just going to come out of the blue um obviously you get your anomalies like i mean lebeck was a good horse he was just an absolute okay. lunatic um but so yeah it, it'd be hard to see anything that's not near the top of the market especially i think with, i think there's a few decent ones at the top of the market as well um so yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't be looking too far down the list for uh, alternatives. Who do you like then? A steering for launch. Um, at the moment, yeah, I like this uh, a steering for launch. Yeah, kind of yeah. fits my the profile that I'm looking for. Um, here's another start for you. Eleven of the last twelve winners had won one of their last three races. So basically, most of the winners had to have a win in one of their three races leading up to the festival. There's one horse who hadn't. Who was that? Probably LeBeck. <laughs> it was LeBeck, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not okay. Um Course form doesn't really seem to matter that much. Only well, all, the, all the Irish have win, don't they? So. Yeah, so seven um, out of 12 winners had never had a, a prior run at the track. So... Oh, this is a nice one as well. You won't get this one. 11 of 12 winners had at least one run in the the 90 days prior to the festival. There's one winner who didn't have a run in the three months leading up to the festival. <laughs> You're never going to get uh, it. No, I won't get that one. Captain CB. <laughs> oh, my God. 
that, that was, you know what? That was the first ever Supreme we watched in the shack. It was, yeah. I remember him winning. I remember him. CB. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Oh, my God. Yeah. How, how many, how long? 90 days, did you say? Oh, yeah, within like 90 days. Right, okay. Because yeah. obviously, um, Abacadabras is having, won't have, well, how many days will he have been off? I, think Ooh, don't be, nice, I don't nice. think it's quite that many, but it no, might it's might be in the 70. No, it's like 75 or something. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, though. Because I wasn't sure if the lack of a recent run would be a positive or a negative. I'm still not sure, to be honest. Might be, it might be a slight negative, to be honest. But I mean, you've got to sort of trust Gordon Elliott knows best. Mm. I, I generally, so from what I've seen, I generally say, um, I mean, this is no startling opinion, but like f- fitness and conditioning, like mega important for the Cheltenham Festival. Obviously, just because of the competitiveness of the races and the configuration of the track. So anything that is added, I mean, we know this, but anything that's added disrupted prep it definitely mm. goes up as a blank mark um, or a black mark for me. So Supreme, you're going for? I really like Abacadabras. I'm going for Asterion for Lange. I expect that he runs... And if you're getting that price on a such a comfortable winner of the delight, very happy with it. Um, we've got the Arkle. Um, so the Arkle market is currently headed by it's headed by Notebook, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So Notebook is threes after a nice win at um Leopardstown and then Fakir Duderies, second five cashback, brewing up the storm. Um very interesting, of course, because that, that Arkle... Jesus, what are you doing? What are you doing? I need to get my phone. What are you doing? <laughs> my internet's going so slow, so I'm just going to use my phone if I need to. Jesus. Um, Some what... of us have done some actual form study, so not, hey. just wrote, not just wrote a book on stats. Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's many ways to um, approach this game. That's why Skin it's a, a cat. Game. That's why it's a beautiful game. Yeah. Did um, you ask me something like? No, I was just um. No, you just started banging about. Um, <laughs> so no, notebook interesting because this Arkle novice chase at Leopardstown is a very useful proving ground for the proper Arkle at Cheltenham. Um, Footpad won it before coming over to winning the festival in 2018. Duvan won it before winning in 2016, and Undersaw won it before winning in 2015. So you've had like they're proper four... horses, them though. Undersaw and Duvan. Footpad that that footpad that uh, that Arkle at footpad one was a joke. <laughs> my my point being is I don't like this notebook. Ooh. Don't rate it. Ooh. Don't I don't I think the Arkle is another. It's it was terrible last year and it's terrible this year. So it could just win by default, but. The price it is now, I would not be. But what is it, five to two or something? Three to one. Yeah, three to one, five to two. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it won the best prep race. Yes, but it won. Why, it won why, hard, why, don't you, why don't you like it then? Go on. All right. Well, yeah, it won the best prep race, but it beat Cashback by what half a length? Yeah. So Cashback, obviously, Willie Mullins' horse. Willie Mullins absolutely farms this race. Um. I would probably have him reverse the form. Me too. But because you know, you know, Mullins will be his target in the, f- the festival. He's he's probably not that but bothered about. I mean, he is bothered, but not as bothered about the Dublin Racing Festival. He wants to win at Cheltenham. Um, interestingly, the uh, reading some sort of uh, the sectional guys like Simon Rollins and that, and Notebook's performance was actually he's actually gone down a level from his last race. It wasn't as high, wasn't as good a performance. So that was, quite, I thought that was quite interesting. Um, so whereas others are maybe coming up, he might be potentially reached his peak and already on the, on the down, on the downward slope. Um, I don't know though. That might have been just a slow. Yeah, run race. You've got to be. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't a slow run race. It was only a few seconds slower than Shaq and Possois. So it was just interesting that it wasn't, you would expect the levels to be going up in a novice chaser, not going down. Um, 
but this market is brutal. I mean, it's it's really bad. I think brewing up the storm is quite interesting. He's uh, but he has he's had a bit of a. I think he got injured. He was supposed to go the sand down in December, but he's two out of two, two over, two out of two over fences. Uh, it was a decent um, novice hurdler last year. Actually finished above notebook in the uh, the Ballymore. Yeah, and notebook was shite in the Ballymore. Though. Yeah, but one of the things with the Arkle is you like it's one of the old sayings is you need to be a decent hurdler, like borderline top class. Um, so it's just a, it's just another negative if you're gonna so you know I mean at, at three to one you've got to look for negatives haven't you really so yeah yeah and um, that's a that's a, a bit of a negative I um this is why I said I had a wild one on on Twitter um for this race and it is quite wild but it's twenty five to one and you can get non runner no bet um on Sky Bet and uh, it's a Willie Mullins horse was. I think twice maybe put in his favourite for the Supreme. <laughs> um, he's had one novice chase start, won by 11 lengths pretty easily. And that is Animix. Ooh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. He... I didn't imagine to hear someone tipping Animix in the Cheltenham preview this year. <laughs> Jesus no, not, not this year, anyway. Yeah, um, every year for he... the last five years, but not this year. <laughs> I just think... Is it obviously this is with the non-run no bet because there's a chance chance he won't run, but then at least you get your money back. And I think the price is big enough. He won, uh, as I said, a novice chase by eleven lengths in Void de Tep at Fairy House. Now that was a, that was a perfectly good um, start to a chasing career. And he's entered at the weekend. He is entered. Oh, he was entered. Where's that entry gone? I'm sh- all right, I need to check that. Back on he... the big list. <laughs> well, I'll be getting my money back if he doesn't turn up. I think he was ent- entered in, in Ireland somewhere on, on Sunday in another novice chase with some some half-decent um, chasers. And if he'd won that, uh, there's every chance that he could go to the Arkle. Um, and if he won that impressively, he probably wouldn't be a million miles off what the top... Uh, horses in this division have achieved so i just thought with him being a mullins horse like obviously mullins i think he's won four at the last five articles he doesn't really have a standout cashbacks probably is number one um interesting it'd be interesting what they do with melon um he wasn't very good at the weekend and he could go to the marsh but he does seem to turn up at cheltenham doesn't win obviously but he seems to like to come second at cheltenham and has that um, decent novice hurdle form. Yeah. So it was just, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of anything in the article market as such. And I wouldn't be back in Notebook at 3-1. to one. Um, Obviously, Fakir Duderi's missed missed the Dublin Racing Festival because of the ground. Um, it's just, there's no depth in here whatsoever. That Esprit de Large, he won that great uh Grade one didn't he? But uh, I don't know. It's just very, very iffy. So I thought, what's what's a decent price that could sort of show up and maybe improve? Um, but but don't back it <laughs> without the non-runner no bet because if he does run at the weekend, then it's crap. Um, but at least you know it won't be going. So it's a sort of risk-free. If he runs well, you know what I mean. You're not going to get twenty fives. You'd be shorter. If he doesn't run well, he won't be running. So you'll get your money back. I um I settled on I thought that cashback might turn over the form with notebook. I mean both mm-hmm. of them were really well backed the other day. So they obviously so the Elliot Stable obviously rate notebook and the Mullen Stable obviously rate um cashback. So notebook went from seventy four to five to four and cashback went from six to one into hundred and thirty. Um mm-hmm. at the prices and like a half a length defeat, um yeah, I'm I think you've, I think you'd have to side with cashback at the prices. Yeah, I'm quite happy to take like a seven to one each way bet versus a five to two, um, or three to one win bet on notebook. To be honest, so that would be that would be my play in the market at the moment. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Yeah, um, I get. But I'll show. I'll show. I'm going to show most of them anyway. Um, but I'll show you the pace for the article because it is actually quite 
striking and quite interesting. Um, if I show it on the screen and then I will also talk about it. So this is the, um, the kind of the, the pace profile or the pace configuration for the Arkle since 2015. Um, so you've had 44 runners and five winners um, in those five years. Um, of the front runners or the leaders, two of them have won. Um, and then of the out five. So uh, of the prominent horses, 13 um, runners, two winners. Um, and then you can see it on, on the screen. So mid-division horses, one winner, hold, hold up horses, zero winners from 20 runners. Um, so quite a real... You, you, do, you do realise you're going to get stick for this. How can you do paces only five races? It's not enough. Yeah, yeah, standard, yeah. <laughs> Classic, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, we, and it's a bloody good point. It's not enough. Ah, well, take take the small sample size data that I've got and, and work with it and have fun with it. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's also borne out in the general pace. I'm um, sorry, chase versus um, hurdles configuration, right? So now, no, now you've challenged me on it now. So now right, I'll just put in while you're looking for something because no. uh, Animix is now not in that race at Punches Town, which is annoying. Um, so I don't know what's going on with that. So maybe don't back it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really no bet in it. So, well, then here's the profile of. Hurdles races versus um, chase races or races over fences at the festival. As you can see, front running is generally just a big benefit. However, it's a massive benefit over fences. Huge. 2.56 uh, win impact value. Um, which means that horses who front run win two and a half uh, more times than expected compared to their price. <laughs> Sure about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure about that. Yeah. Now you're thinking about that there. Is this a five year scale or is this longer? That's no, that's the magical five year scale. <laughs> All right, oh Jesus. Exciting. Yeah, so exciting, yeah. Ah, uh, some other anyone wants to crunch the data longer than that, they can be my guest and tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> um so yeah. Back the front runner in the arcle was my point and who so who are the front runners i think both of them were front run don't they? all right <laughs> so which one are you back in <laughs> cash back just back the one that's a bigger price yeah exactly i mean to be fair i mean what, what price is he seven yeah seven it's, it's a decent price really yeah i mean you'd, you should back that each way filthy of course. lovely each way price <sighs> yeah i mean how many are you going to turn up a fucker do there, it could go marsh, could come here. Mm. It's your feet going, going marsh, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll yeah. get we'll get to him. Yeah. Um yeah. Mm. Mr. Fisher might go marsh. Sam Crow will probably go marsh. <sighs> the rest are useless. Yeah, I don't know. Seven to one each way is probably probably not a bad shot. I'm gonna hear some trends about the arc. <laughs> yes. Right, let's find some trends out the article. Favorite, oh, this is nice. Favorites on the Betfair Exchange have won six out of the last twelve races, and the top. But Mullins, Mullins has won four of the last five, and I'm guessing they're all sharp. That'll, that'll be why. Yeah. <laughs> and the top three in the exchange market have won ten out of the last twelve races. Mm. Eleven of the last twelve winners of the race have been priced below eight to one on the exchange at SP. And if you backed all horses below eight to one since two thousand and eight, you'd have an eleven from thirty-two, thirty-four percent strike rate, plus thirteen points to industry SP, plus fourteen points to Betfair SP. So, um, yeah, um, eleven of twelve winners finished first in one of their last three runs. There was one horse that hadn't. Do you know who that was? How long? We how far are we going back here? To, to since two thousand and eight, I have I have a, a fundamental handicap that horse race base doesn't go back any further. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like basically for me, racing starts in two thousand and eight. Well, that's when we started watching it anyway, so think, it's pretty much so pretty it, much bang on. So it fits for me, yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. You have to tell me. Um, for Paddy De Plastro. Ah, yes, that was and that was in two thousand eight. Two thousand and nine. It? it was the year. Two thousand and nine. Yeah. And I seem to remember that one in the shack as well. Yeah, yeah. And he I've was... had it a pastor. Yeah. 
he was a three length <laughs> second to cool Dean in the, the Moriarty novice um, chase at Leopardstown in this previous start. Um, so it can be done. Yeah, one from 12. <laughs> <laughs> it can be done. Yeah. Um, Horses top on official ratings have won seven of the last 12 renewals. Um, maybe maybe Notebook is an absolute good thing then. It is nice. Yeah, um, 11, nice top. 11 of 12 winners had already had at least one run at the track prior to the race. The only horse that's won that hadn't already run at Cheltenham was Undersaw in 2015. And Notebook has never run at the track. It was in the Ballymore, no, no, one. No, sorry. Notebook has run at the track. Cashback has never run at the track, has he? No, don't think yeah. so. So, yeah, no, that was a positive for Notebook, not a negative. Oh, it might be a good thing, then. I might be crabbing it for the wrong reason. Yeah. Horses having their first run at the track have a very poor record. They're one from 36. 2% strike rate, minus 34 points. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there's one horse that absolutely destroyed every bit of stats and trends and all that shite um, in the Arkle. Do you know who that horse was? Papadi the Passer. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> I don't know. It was Western War Horse when he won. Oh, in- yes, yes, yes. Jesus, that was awful. You know, you said last but, year was a bad article. Jesus, that must have been a bad article. No, no, no. I think he, no, he beat, um, he beat Champagne Fever, didn't he? Who'd won the Supreme the year before? I think. He did, I think, yeah. Uh, head, he beat Champagne Fever, yeah. Yeah. Did he ever do anything ever again? No, he had one more run at Aintree and finished third by 28 lengths. Yeah. Good. I think it's a shocking article, though, still. It's become a crap race, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It's definitely been on the. Who was the last the downgrade winner of the uh, Altior? Altior, wasn't it? Yeah, Altior definitely. Like, um, I mean, Footpad was okay, duck, but he's been a bit garbage. So. The duck wasn't great, was he? Who? The duck. The duck. Yeah. Who's the duck? Duck de Geneva's. Oh God! The duck. No, he was not good at all. Terrible. Oh, terrible. Footpad's not been very good, has he? Nah, absolute letdown. Oh. I think I think um I think everyone got a little bit too excited and he was just beating crap on soft ground and and it's come down to it, he's not that good. What, uh, what we, 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 we to be fair, we had a good run with Undersaw, Duvan and Altior. I was gonna say what then, period that was. Oh my god. Yeah. But even before then, like Sprinter Sakura and Simon Sig and Size in yes. Europe and all them. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 these are all good. It's you. I mean, even before then, Moscow Flyer, well cheap. Like, it, I mean, it's normally a top class race. It's just been, I don't know, maybe just a, even, I don't know, maybe just horses with the with the extra um, races like the the JLT, the Marsh, like they can just use that as an intermediate race. That like York Hill went there, didn't he? After Votor obviously won the JLT. Um, Having more races creates this kind of thing. Yeah. So, Arkle, you are going for? Oh, fuck me, I don't know. I just don't know. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. So, whatever, uh, something, something, something that Willie Mullen sends. Yeah, and I'm going for cashback. Right, yeah. um, Ultima. I have like this is a handicap with no entries, so we might have to just skip this. I also have nothing. <laughs> well, I have one thing to say. John Joe has won three of these in the last twelve years. David Pipe has won three of them in the last twelve years. That was mm. going to be my the sum two, two, two of them was the same horse though. Uh, yes, it and was, tempo two. Uh, tempo two, yeah, yeah. So um, that was going to be the sum total of my analysis. I had a little look at it, but it's hard to go in deep. I thought Kildasart was quite interesting, a big price. I don't even know if he's going for this. Um, obviously, has decent Cheltenham form. Was in that uh, hot JLT last year. I think he came fourth in it. Has a win at Cheltenham. Uh, he's off one five one. He, I thought he was interesting. Um, but yeah, until the entries come out, we'll we'll uh, give it a skip. Champion hurdle. Um, is the twenty twenty champion hurdle the worst champion hurdle of our lifetime? It's the worst one since last year. That's for sure. Which was last year's probably the last year's wasn't very good either. I'll be back. Talk about the champion hurdle. 
Oh, where are you going? Oh, God. Toilet. Left me on the, left me on the spot here. Um, well, it's brutal. That's a start. Um, interesting news just coming out, actually, that Honeysuckle is probably going to go to the Mayors. Um, I mean, which could potentially be an even harder race than the champion hurdle if uh, Benny did you lines up. So that's uh, it's an interesting one. <sighs> I mean, let's have a look at it. Who's, who's in there? We've got Epiton, who obviously flopped at Cheltenham last year in the Mayor's Novice. She was very, very impressive at Kempton, but this is a totally different track and she's best price four to one and i think she she i suppose she's the one who could have a little bit of x factor and she could um have a bit of improvement in her as well but i mean she's a skinny price i'm just looking here she's jesus christ she's five to two in some places um i wouldn't be touching her at that price um but then you're looking at pentland hills seven to one Last time out, he was well. He was pretty, pretty appalling, wasn't he? After basically just getting done on the line by Bally Andy. I mean, it's hardly champion hurdle form. Um, are you back? I'm back. I'm just waffling. Just saying, out Epitont was the favourite, but oh. I, don't, I don't know. Oh. Um, Awful. It's it's a really really bad race. Um, what, what, so have you got anything I'm to say? Gonna, I'm going to tip a, a terrible horse. Um, but some spiel first. Um, I mean, the Irish champion has often provided a wonderful indicator for this. So of, I think, the last 20 winners or something, seven have come from the Irish champion hurdle. So Honeysuckle should... Well, I've just, I've just said to... Not, but, but he's not going. As, yeah. As you just said, but I missed it. <laughs> mm. I didn't so, know if you heard. Yeah, but I mean that means the mares is probably going to be the best race of the, of the week. Well, it's definitely going to be strong. I mean, I was just saying there that it could be that could be the harder race. But I mean, honeysuckle again like, to crab more Irish form. That was that wasn't impressive at all. Um, yeah, but the general a... population is just stronger. Yeah, but that was uh, if you. If you were confident back in Honeysuckle for Champion Hill after watching that, I think... No, I wasn't, but... No, but I'm just saying if if, if anyone was. I mean, you've probably done your money now anyway because she's not going, but... um, Like, that that Darva Star, he was easily beaten by Envy Island and Abacadabra. So, again, I don't know how... Going back to Abacadabra, how people can not think he's a good bet is beyond me. Um... Yeah, but this and that, that's that Saldier. I think he's made of sellotape and some twigs. He seems very, very injury prone. It's gone a bit quiet on him. Um, as I was saying, Pentland Hills. I would you wouldn't trust him. But I suppose oh. he has got the, at least he's got a bit of chance and form, and he won the the triumph well. But I'm not sure how good that triumph was either. Uh, classical Dream probably wants a bog, or definitely wants a bog anyway. Um, and then, then bloody hell, then you're down to twenty to one. I know you like Charger. So I've always loved Charger. I thought he was an absolute weapon. Um, he had some massive speed figures and a couple of his wins back end of 2018. It was when he went for that like hot streak, winning on decent grounds. Like he pissed up at Galway, didn't he? And then a decent race at Leopardstown, I think. Um, yeah, I thought he was like the next coming, but he's been shite since. So and he was ranked the other day, so I can't be having him. Um, mm. probably the sort of typical thing that he'll do to me is he'll go and win here. Um, I don't like Nicky Henderson at Cheltenham in general. I don't like his record. I don't think he's got a good record. However, he does have a good record in this. Um, and I'm going to tip a rat um, because... So Nicky has won this four times in the last well, 16 years or whatever, something like that. Four times in recent history. Um, and the horses, <laughs> this is a terrible selection. The horses that have won it had their prep in the contenders hurdle at Sandown. Um, Bouvedere, not... 
Do not say call me Lord. I'm going to tip call me Lord. Yeah. Who were there? Took that route in 2018. He got, he got beat. Yeah. By fucking that Kel the Sand. Like, yeah, it's all good. Is, it's all good. Nah, nah, come on. We've, we've got the worst champion hurdle in history. And I would like to take an each way bet on Call Me Lord. Um, because I think Nicky thinks he's better than where we ended up that day. So, Bouvedere took that route 2018, 2017. Binocular also took the same route in 2010. Um, of the four Anderson winners of the champion hurdle, three went via that contenders hurdle. And it's only Punjabi who took um, a different route. He went to the Kingwell hurdle at Wincanton. Um, so my I, I, hypothesis was that um, if Nicky um, runs one and fancies one in the contenders at Sandown, that's his primary champion hurdle horse. Mm. So I, I thought Fusel Raffles was going to be his horse for this. This the 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 word the the rumours and the hype coming out of there was seems to be seemed to be for him, but he wasn't very good at Kempton, but. I don't know. Um, do you know who the highest rated mayor is listed for this? Who's entered? Verdana Blue? Yes. Yeah. It's quite interesting. I mean, I wouldn't back her, but because she needs like really good ground. And on the first day of the festival, it's just, it just won't be. Um, but I think that's quite interesting. And there was a lot of talk when she beat Booba there last year. Um why not, eh? About her being a, a, a very live outsider. And I think she was like, I don't know what price she was. I don't even I don't think she went, actually. Oh, yeah, she did go. She came fifth miles back. But, um, and but, in the mares, 14 to 1 in the mares and 33 hmm. to 1 here. Hmm? Wouldn't be the worst. Yeah, so it's, just a, it's, just a, it's just a ground thing. She, she doesn't want it soft. And it's going to be a little bit soft. If it was good ground... Um, she would, I mean, she's a wild price, but mm. it's just, it, it's just. I mean, you could even, you could say Silver Streak. I mean, was he third in this last year? He's thirty threes in a, a weaker, potentially weaker race. So, and it's, do you know what I mean? Like, I would just have a stab at something. It's not a race to obviously get heavily involved with. Um, Let me give you a stat to tell you how shit this race is. 10 of the last 12 winners had an official rating of 162 or above. Currently, the top mm. rated entered horses are Call Me Lord on 160 and Verdana Blue on 160. Yeah, that's pretty bad, to be fair. Yeah. Uh... Call Me Lord's a decent bet. No, he was got... He liked sound down, sand down and he was terrible. At... Well, he wasn't terrible. To but... get beat by Kelda Sand. I like it. wasn't great. Was he, he was backed, wasn't he? But he was four to six to win that race, and he couldn't win it. Um, no, he wasn't backed. <laughs> he was four, he was four to six. He went out four. Oh, there she is. What, what do you think of Epitant? Uh, I'm not mad keen, to be honest. I don't. Really I think at the. I think it's a shocking price. Like, yeah. Considering how 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 um. She didn't really. Well, she didn't perform at all. Did she? Uh, at Cheltenham last year in the mares, she came ninth. Kempton's a very different track to Cheltenham. As we know, due to why do we know that? Charlie Parks. Charlie Park. <laughs> same, same never, colours. <laughs> never forget the lessons that Charlie Parks taught us, because he taught us that do not back nice. Kempton winners in the Christmas but, turtle. Is it the same race? No, no, different. No, race. it was a different race. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was only he was only um, a juvenile when he won there. He was only a three, uh, three or four year old. Yeah. This so this race, this Christmas hurdle, Epitome beat Silver Streak. Silver Streak's probably not a bad shout each way, you know. Well, and Epitome was getting and and that and, and, and yeah, yeah. Well, she'll be getting that again. But Ballyandy was third. Yeah. At three and a three and a quarter lengths back, and he's come out and beat Pendleton Hill since. Like, he's not even that old as Silver Streak. Is he? He's only seven. I, I would. I, I mean, it's he's shown that he can perform at the track. I've, I've seen worse thirty-three to one shots. Put it that way. Mm. 
So, the worst champion hurdle in history. Call me Lord each way at 25s for me. For you. I'm going to say Silver Streak. 33s each way. Lovely. I mean, the other thing, with it being such a bad race, it could be a big field. So, you know what I mean? You could. Or to be fair, he's only 33s at uh, one place. It is William Hill like, but. I don't know if that's uh, even an available price, but I don't know. It's a bad race. Mm. It's not, nothing exciting. So, so Mares is wildly exciting now. Sure, yes, we'll move on. We've got the Mares. Um, wildly exciting now. It looks like Benny Dejew and Honeysuckle are going. So, four to five, Benny Dejew and six to four, Honeysuckle. Um, how do you... Um... I mean, it's incredible, really. <laughs> How do you see that shaping up? Ah, oh, I think Benny did you. They win easily. Do you really? The yeah, Irish I don't champion rate. hurdle winner. I Go don't rate only Suckle. Don't rate only Suckle. Do you think Benny did you would have won the Irish champion hurdle? Uh, yes. Comfortably. <sighs> Willie Mullins said he's his, his best mare. He, he thinks he, if he if he thinks he's better than any power, then this is going to be a cakewalk as long as he didn't fall again. Yeah. But it's a two horse race, and I think she's better. If you're getting if you're getting plus money on the day, I would snap it up. Yeah, I've I've, I've just done my ratings and I've got Benny. Did you nowhere near on his circle? <laughs> I think Honeysuckle pisses it. Oh, uh, well. Well. That'd be interesting. We're there on the day. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and the prices will probably be pretty close anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing is, it's just Willie Mullins' race, isn't it? I mean, he's won it nine times in the last yeah. 12 years. So. Who, a fool would oppose Millie, 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 Millie Willins. Millie Willis. <laughs> Millie Willis. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I just think Beth Benny's. I mean, she's decent. She's top class. So. I would talk more, but my I just can't get anything up on my computer, so I'm just having to go off memory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remembered that Benny the Juice class, so I just said it. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll pose each other in the um, the mares. What were the Claws brothers? Um, I haven't really looked at it. No, nah, I wouldn't wait for the uh, wait for the entries. Go into more detail closer at the time. What about the four miler? So the race when Nigel Tinkler told me last year <laughs> that think he thinks when I was crabbing OK Corral's <laughs> Corral um Corral Coral um chances of Corral. It's definitely Corral. <laughs> yeah, of winning the four miler because he wouldn't stay the trip. And Nigel said, I think. Nicky Henderson knows it. Well, I think Nicky Henderson knows a bit more about training horses for the four mile <laughs> than fucking Tom Wilson. <laughs> yeah, never in the race, and he pulled up three fences out. Cheers, Nigel. I think so, um, the, the bet in this race is probably over two point four five horses to die. <laughs> oh, the, the poor. That. What are you going to say to finish? The poor That's things. It. You can't say to die. The poor things. Um, I don't know. It's not. I don't like it. Been changed. I'm not, yeah, only a little bit. I don't know. I'm not really a fan of this race. Mm. To be fair, like anything over three and a half miles is pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not like the Grand National? Um, uh, uh, if it's sunny, <laughs> if it's sunny and I'm having a few beers. Although this, the flat's back on then, so I'm not as fussed. Maybe some really nice small sample size pace analysis for you. Oh god, this is exactly. But in this in this race, pace analysis for the four miler. Jesus, but you've never seen this before, have you? This is like no, no, I haven't actually. No, just unique. Um, yeah. What is interesting though is that the pace bias seems to completely shift the further they go. And again, I don't know if that's an interesting opinion or that's really obvious. But yeah, so um, just chill out at the back and plod along. Get a nice winning impact value. You'd have 25 runners running along at the back. 
would, would have won. How, three, how really. many how many horses even finished last year? Oh, there was about two, wasn't there? <laughs> so stay at the back and as long as you don't get in any trouble you just trot round and you'll end up just near the front just get that lovely place in Pact Valley just plodding around like you and me mm. could probably just run around and finish I don't know about that jump the fences I think obviously the key thing with this race and it's it's obvious in said every year is just the jockey bookings that's what you just got to look for because there's such a difference between the amateurs obviously like your Jamie Codd and your Patrick Mullins and all that kind of thing Derek well, O'Connor. There was that big plunge, wasn't there, last year when um, on Orca Corral? Yeah, yeah. Derek O'Connor. Uh, <laughs> O'Connor. Derek O'Connor. Derek O'Connor. Uh, O'Connor got books, and then, yeah, just the market went wild. And... I, I didn't um, Le Brule win with Jamie Codd on? Wasn't Jamie Codd on, I think? Uh, Codd's won two. Um, he won, yeah, Le Brule. Yeah, Le Brule, yeah. Causes, yeah. Derek mm. O'Connor with Manella Rocco and Chicago Gray. And mm. Patrick Mullins with Raf Vinden and back in focus. Are you, are you jockey booking? Yeah, just yeah. those three lads have just got it sewn up, basically. Yeah. Well, they also get the best horses, don't they? Because they're connected to the better yards, the better rides. So, yeah, you, you, you obviously depending on price, I suppose you could probably dutch them free and <laughs> you're probably going to have a decent chance. Yeah, you probably would. Um, don't, know, don't, know if you, don't know if the prices would be able to dutch all three, like, but. One thing that is interesting is that 10 of the last 12 winners um, were having their booked jockey on their back, as the horse's back, for the first time in their career. So a past relationship between jockey and horse is not a prerequisite to winning the race. And that's probably because they're all amateurs, isn't it? Well, yeah. <laughs> then you get, but like you've got some monkey on your back for a year, and then you get Jamie Cord, and then you just get unleashed, don't you? Well, no, because they probably had professional jockeys on the back, and then they're thrown into a race where you have to have a conditional jockey. Yeah, but Jamie Cord's just an absolute king. As yeah, I'm not. I'm not disputing that. I'm <laughs> disputing your stupid stat about saying how oh, the horse doesn't have the same jockey on. Well, there you go. No, but I thought that, I thought they might have liked to give. So they knew they were going for the four miler. The, and they give might him a spin on him beforehand. On him, yeah, but it just, yeah, yeah. The requirement to give him a spin on them doesn't seem to bear out. Mm. Yeah, the the, the 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 top sort of horses, the horses with a good chance of winning, could potentially do that. Obviously, like you mentioned with Derek O'Connor last year on OK Corral, um, I think I remember Jamie Cod potentially riding Genie in a bottle. And he, when he was favourite beforehand, I might be wrong there, but I'm, uh, I might be right. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I see what you mean. It's it, it's it's not a it's not a great race. So who's your, we nap, who's your nap for day one? Nap for day one, um, oh, Abacadabra, definitely. Mine's um. Call me Lord. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Quite like him. Really do. I think I'd rather back Charger. And we're there, so that's going to be fun. We could lose a lot of money. <laughs> Very small betting. Abacadabras will have to win, basically. Yeah. But I think that'll, will. that'll inform how the day goes, won't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. If he loses, it'll be, that'll be normal betting. Counting down for the Lincoln. Who's going to be top trainer for the festival? Um, hmm. Well, Mullins or Elliot, but I haven't really looked at all wow. the chances. Wow, no shit. Yeah, well, I haven't gone through all the chances to do it. But but who do you think? Mullins or Elliot? Um, I don't know. I'd need to go through the horses and see which one's going to which races oh. and see. Oh. That's what, well, you know what I mean? If you'd, if you'd asked me this question earlier, before we started, I could have looked. I thought you'd have prepared. No. Nah. The well, only thing I've prepared is that um, Fahin isn't going to win the marsh. I um, can't see him in the four miler. Uh, nah, no chance. He'll he'll surely run in the marsh now. Quite like it. Um, I obviously there was a lot of sentiment around the victory, but I think if you put your analytical head on, he's only just beaten. Easy game, 
it was, was it an easy game? It was easy, whatever. Um, you were? He's no, it was an easy game. Easy works the hurdler. Um, it, I just it, easy game. Yeah. I think if you take the sentiment out and just look at it as a novice chase performance going forward, and the fact that he's a twelve-year-old and he's definitely regressing, um, he doesn't jump amazingly either, and he never really did over hurdles either. He always clattered a few. Um, I think you've just got to take him on, and I think the horse, the one, the one novice chase performance I was really impressed with over the weekend was itchy feet in the uh, silly Isles uh, at Sandown and um, only his second chase start and he won really easily there was plenty more in the tank so and uh, I just uh, yeah and I went back and watched because actually I didn't actually see his chase debut and I went back and obviously it was like a, he was like one to five on but it was a nice introduction stepped up straight into a group one um he was just nicely out the back just taking his stride he wasn't perfect he, he in fact he pecked quite heavily on the second last fence which made the victory even more impressive because he's just absolutely scooted around just traveled gone past a few decent of his chasers and um, obviously all eyes were on Lorena on that race but she bombed out she never she was never going to win um and yeah i, I really I, I thought it was a really good performance for a second start over fences and this is obviously the race that Defi Desoy won last year before winning the JLT. Um, I've I've backed him after that, and uh, I, like him. I like him as well. I think the interesting thing with him as well is he was. I mean, he was a decent obvious hurdler. He was third in the Supreme, um, but he looks. The he stepped up to two and a half miles now over fences, and uh, he looks like he's taken to them. And the extra distance has brought out improvement. And he is a horse on the up. Whereas for him, there's obviously a horse regressing now. Um, obviously, he was an unbelievable horse, um, but he's obviously not going to be as good as 12. But I just think, yeah, I think I'd rather be on the one on the up, who's a bigger price as well. Um, and again, the Marsh, I know we're on about day one, but I just wanted to talk about that. Um, the Marsh doesn't look a strong race either. Um, I think he could be, yeah, really, really nice also. That would that would be my bet for this podcast. Get on itchy feet for the marsh. <laughs> wow, day one podcast. <laughs> day one podcast. I have a day three bet. Abacadabra, so don't get why he's getting crabbed at all. So, um, so I think. Can you remember what my nap was for the entire festival last year? I gave it as a preview night. Was it Charger? <laughs> no, um, <laughs> it was just back all Gordon Elliott horses because if you back them all, oh, yes. you profit every single year. Yeah, yeah. Um, because most years you are. And then he went and only had three winners last year, six percent, <laughs> minus thirty-four points. Ooh. So um yeah, brutal for Gordon last year. Terrible year. Um, but I think Gordon's gonna bounce back this year. I think well, big well, year for Gordon. I think he's biting back. I reckon mm. he's been stung by that last year. And I mean, as of course the entire season is probably geared around Cheltenham anyway, but I think he really will be um, biting back at Cheltenham this year. Well, he's got a good chance in the National Hunt Chase. We didn't put any selections up, but Champagne Classic's obviously got a good chance. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Abacadabra's in the Supreme. Um, doesn't have rats. an article. And just some rats in the handicaps. Yeah, oh, yeah. Martin so Pike, he loves rats. that. So many he loves rats. the Martin Pike, doesn't he? So, yeah, so um, he dealt to work in the Gold Cup, potentially, although uh, not for me, but not obviously like got a chance. Um. Yeah. So Gordon, Gordon, top trainer for me. Let's have a look. How many favourites has he got? Ah, uh, that's fine. We can talk about it on the next podcast. Ooh, when's the next podcast? Next week. Are we doing one every week now? Yeah, four days. We... Four days for Cheltenham. Four weeks till Cheltenham. One podcast a week. That's, that's good maths. Yeah. Tag right. the roll. If he turns up, there's a freebie. Oh, he might win, yeah. He will win. Yeah. Oh, itchy feet sevens now. People, people are just so shrewd. Right then, good. So, so shrewd. Thanks, that was day one. Thanks for listening. Day two next week. Day two next week. More tenuous small sacrifice <laughs> pairs statistics <laughs> for people to crab. <laughs> good. See you later. Thanks for listening. Bye, guys.